A very good morning to all of you. Welcome to today's news analysis. We are doing the Indian Express Papers Chandigarh edition. Now in today's newspaper, we have it very very light. Uh, but yes, some things I would tell, I would like to tell you. Here we will learn briefly about the self help groups and various ideas on which UPSC can ask questions. Similarly, there is a statement by Mr. Jay Shankar, uh, who was in US as part of two plus two diplomacy. So here again. India US relationship, the ways UPSC has been asking questions, I have summed up in this paper. Renewable energy and its relationship with gravity. There is a private sector enterprise which is working on this. So, very interesting idea. As part of GS3 science and tech, it can be asked. Our Defense Minister Rajnath Singh makes a statement that we need a, we need a stronger defense forces. That's all we have. Now, what we will do today is we will learn as to what is the government doing to have a stronger defense forces, what are the initiatives in place. Now coming to the editorial opinion section, uh, today being 2nd October, right, so things associated with Gandhiji have been discussed in the opinion section and the big opinion section, big articles. So today what I have done is to make life simpler, I have shared on telegram as to how Questions associated with Gandhiji can be asked how we should prepare for means. So broad outlines I have shared on Telegram, Instagram, etc. There is a small critique on the data protection bill. So that we will discuss some bit revision also. Okay. Slowing momentum that is uh, in the coming half of this year, we will see a slowdown in the economy, a bit of a, a decline in GDP growth. Okay. Economy very brief, right? Crude, GST, and increase in passenger vehicle sales or private vehicle sales. Okay. Explained section is telling us about invasive species, concarpus. We discussed earlier. Gandhiji in currency notes, right? Protection of monuments. So all these topics are covered. So let's start with the first topic on the self-help group. But before starting, I would like to tell you we have a mentorship course. A uh, very affordable price, 6,000 rupees. A anything and everything you need will be made available. Uh, it's The details are there in that, uh, you know, the website. I have pointed it out. And uh, the link for the website is shared on, will be shared on the comment section as well as it is always there in the description box. Now coming to the first topic. So there is this government ad of Chhattisgarh government where he is, uh, where the CM is pointing out that his government has worked on women self-help groups. Previously in GS3 paper, which covers economy, socio-economic development, a question on this topic has already been asked. Okay, so let me briefly explain you self-help groups and women self-help group in particular. Now, typical model, you know, self-help group is basically working on providing microfinance. Microfinance is small amounts of money given on loan at a high rate of interest. There is no collateral involved. Okay. So normally what happens is microfinance is provided to a household, to a particular person who, who's, who starts a small enterprise, earns revenue and gives it to the bank, returns the money back. Now normally in such cases we see defaults, we see high failure rates, etc. Now, what the government has been doing, inspired by the Kutamshri model of Kerala, what they are doing is, rather than giving money to a particular person, individual, money is given collectively to a group of people, or which we can call it as the self-help group. And here also the idea is to give it to the women. So women are identified, and they collectively, and uh, so women self-help groups are formed. The members are women. Right. So money is given collectively to the self-help group, not to a particular individual. So they are provided money. At the same time, they are provided training, marketing support, etc. to run their enterprise. Right. So that is the idea. Now with this, this has been a highly successful model, which helps in providing socio-economic development, women empowerment, women members earn, right, as well as financial inclusion. Because money, uh, these people are getting loans not from 
unregistered organizations or from money lenders but from formal financial institutions okay so here what is happening happening is that the loans that have been given right the, there is a bit of honesty over here because the responsibility is shared not one person is responsible but collective responsibility is taken so a bit of honesty is there credit culture is maintained over here at the same time we see that telfair groups tend to be more successful than an enterprise run by a solo person so these self-help groups eventually expand and provides gainful opportunities, not just for these people, but also for others in the vicinity. And with gainful employment, uh, it also leads to socio-economic development or, uh, you know, better uh, li livelihood for their families as well. So they also benefit because of this. So household well-being can also be seen. So very quickly, entrepreneurship, grateful employment, financial inclusion, and household well-being. And you know, it's normally said that if money comes into the hands of the women, women tend to invest money in the welfare of the house collectively. In education, healthcare, more expenditure on those lines can be seen. Okay. Now coming to this. So this self-help group are seen as a means of sustainable socio-economic development. They are seen as a means of women empowerment. Now you understand how women empowerment, because women are earning, women are at the core of this enterprise scheme of the government. Financial inclusion is also taking place. And there are a few successful models like the Kudum Shri model of Kerala. Okay, moving to the international section now. So previously, this is about Maldives, now we are discussing Maldives. So there was an explained section which told us that in Maldives, Maldives, I hope it, you know where it is, India, south of the 8 degree channel, there are this group of islands, exactly in this order. So this these are known as Maldives, the capital is Malay. Okay, so here elections were to take place. And there were two prominent leaders, Soli was the president and Muizu. So Muiz, sorry, M-U-I-Z. So these two leaders were there. They were contesting. So Soli belongs to the M uh, Maldives Democratic Party, while Muiz is from People's National Congress. Now Soli is known to be pro-India. He is known, known as India first leader. He said that we prioritize India's interest. While Muiz is anti-India, he is seen to be pro-China. And previously Muiz worked with President Yameen, who was very much pro-China and he, his presidency saw that India's interest in the region was were compromised. So this is of concern to India. Okay. Now coming to the next one, what are India's and China's stake in this election? If they have, now China, you know, this Maldives is uh, very strategically located in the um, Indian Ocean region. The important sea lanes of communication passes through it. The trade corridor, etc. of the Indian Ocean passes through this region. Maldives can, uh, kind of controls it. Okay. So China has a stake. China wants to build this Belt and Road Initiative. They want to have a series of ports in the Indian Ocean region. They want access to this region. So China gets it. Plus, of course, Anybody who access to has access to this, it will also provide access to exclusive economic zone of their region. And it is believed that this region has a lot of, you know, the seabed sector has potential of natural gas, uh, rare earths. So all those things are there. Now, India is naturally concerned with the predominance of China in the Indian Ocean region. So India is concerned with the Chinese influence. China is not our friend. We see it as an adversary. Okay. It is believed that China has this policy of containing India. China has the policy of containing India as part of its string of pearls doctrine. So having a series of ports around India. Now moving to India. So India is naturally concerned. Now India believes that India Indian Ocean region should be under its control it should be the net security provider of the indian ocean region in fact india came up with this initiative known as sagar security and growth for all in the region and security 
security here that india has the responsibility in fact during prime minister jawaharlal nehru's time he he said he said that our vision is to create a blue water navy that is predominance in this indian ocean region that is what the meaning was okay now as part of string of pearls india has a doctrine known as iron curtain policy that is creating a curtain so that china does not enter creating a barrier so this iron curtain uh, policy is compromised with um, their presence chinese presence in the maldives region and imagine if there are defense uh, ports here uh, china can park their naval ships mil military ships they can park their nuclear weapons so this is of great concern to india okay next us averts government shutdown after congress passes stop gap bill so simple us executive which is of the uh, president biden then we have the congress which comprises of the house and senate so if any budget is to be passed right uh, any anything that executive has to do it has to get approval from the congress congress was not giving it and if the money does not come the executive cannot function so there would have been a shutdown now we know that some arrangement would have been done so this arrangement is now known as stop gap bill that is for time period we are agreeing to the executive's demand so that shutdown does not take place i have seen it uh, repetitively taking place in usa okay next article indonesia set to launch uh, southeast asia's first high speed railway and the term for high speed railway is normally bullet trains okay so we'll cover this okay let me tell you there one more way of one more new technology that has emerged that is maglev trains read about it later this is not maglev just that it's the normal bullet train okay so indonesia says so what is the this is done with the help of china as china's parts of belt and road initiative and the name of the train is a uh, whoosh right whoosh fast whoosh it is whoosh bullet train suicide blast took place in near turkey you can uh, visit the map of turkey uh, see where it is located important streets so that you can do as per your exam okay now we come to the front page so india is doing pretty well in the asian games which is taking place in china they have gotten a gold in steeple chase and shot put steeple chase is where this barriers are there and the athlete has to run and cross this so steeple chase and shot put is that heavy ball is there and the, they have to throw at the maximum distance besides they have gotten silver medals as well right so name of the athletes athletes are given uh next is india us ties okay so uh, the foreign minister mr jay shankar is in the us as part of 2 plus 2 diplomacy 2 plus 2 means usa and india's uh, foreign ministers usa and india's defense ministers right so foreign and defense so yeah so that is the diplomacy so they are there in the us and there uh, the foreign minister has made this remark that the relationship between the two are at an all time high now what points can be made to justify that the relationship is at an all time high you don't have to read this in fact you don't get the content also right as i was reading this don't get the really the content okay so briefly we can say uh, in greater engagement in the defense domain the foundational treaties that were signed between india and usa so that can be referred so you can google for uh, foundational defense related treaties okay talking to talking about diplomacy diplomatic engagements between the two countries so that has also improved in fact uh, right so we can refer to the cooperation in the multilateral fora um, we can see support for india in the united nations security council by usa for example uh, adding more terrorist uh, which india wants into the 1267 resolution of the security council in fact in one of the prelims it was asked 1267 resolution as of the un is associated with which of the following okay so this is there besides india and usa have formed the cord you know you uh, india for, uh, is seen uh, as a 
important pillar of china's of usa's pivot to asia policy so so that is also there so cord is there then the new cord new cord is basically an informal name for an alliance that usa has created for the middle east so new cord is nothing but i2 u2 for some reason i did not specify this in a day before uh, paper new cord was there so i'm telling you today i2 u2 i2 is india israel u2 is usa and uae so that is being referred to as the new cord fancy word for a normal diplomatic exercise actually okay besides with india support uh, with usa support india has gotten uh, as part of strategic treaties like uh, uh, mtcr missile technology control regime uh, vasenar arrangement so india is part of this Uh, USA is making a case for India's entry into the NSG. Right, so you have seen some good things over here with, between the relationship. Now we are having this Biden's uh, President Biden being invited to uh, India. We see uh, for Republic Day, we see a lot of bilateral meetings taking place. So that intensification has taken place. Okay. now at a time when we say that they are at the all time high there are still certain concerns when it comes to india us relationship for example the ukraine crisis the issue of the climate change historical responsibilities point so there are certain things the wto issue so those are also there now let's have a look at the question that was asked on relationship between washington and new delhi or us and india So this was a question asked in 2019, and uh, yeah, so let's read it. I'll give you a brief of context also. So what introduces friction into ties between India and the US? That is friction tensions. Is that Washington is still unable to find for India a position in its global strategy, so global strategy of Washington. which would satisfy india's national self esteem and ambitions explain with suitable examples so this was a question asked in 2019 now you see we we always talk about us india tie relations uh, doing very well they are you know improving but the what exam is asking us that there are there is friction between the two countries because usa is not able to fit in india's as part of its global you know as part of us's global strategy india doesn't fit in very well especially when it comes to india's aspirations so imagine so these things we have to prepare and uh, you know we need an eye for this okay this, now this question was asked in 2019 uh, 2019 was uh, the time of uh, donald trump and at that time negotiations of usa were going on with taliban now we all know that india has a great stake india is a friend of the us but still india was not involved in on deliberations on taliban issue at that time there were talks taking place in qatar doha so there is a bit of lack of trust or it doesn't see india in that place right so that affects india it affects the relationship so some of the pointers i have mentioned over here okay now if you when you are attempting this do mention a point that the relations are at a high, high they are doing well give some examples briefly and then say then focus and the main focus should be on this thing that it's washington's global its position in its global strategy on various realms so combine this with examples that it is not able to meet aspirations so give an example of the negotiations in Afghanistan, so that was there. India was not made part of it. Pakistan was made part of it. Okay. Likewise, uh, we can talk about the glo global strategy. Also involved Iran nuclear talks. So India was not made a part of the U.S. Iran uh, nuclear negotiations that were going on. So India was not part of it. So yes. Likewise, uh, in the West Asia policy of the U.S. India is nowhere to be seen. Actually, recently India has added as part of ITU to diplomacy, but overall it is basically Saudi Arabia, Iran, Israel. So these countries are talked about, negotiated. Recently, India has been made part of this grouping, new COD or ITU to as I said before. 
so india really didn't fit in as part of uh, us's global strategy only place where india fits in is the pivot to asia and so there they need india's support now here also one may see that when talks are going on between usa and china we don't know as to what is trans uh, conspired between the two countries and if it will be detrimental to india's interest so we do not know so there is a mistrust within indian policy makers about the talks between us and china us may drag india into the uh, the the conflict with china but itself have a safe have, uh, have some safeguard for itself likewise non support for the unsc permanent membership expansion of the unsc permanent membership so it affects india's national self esteem as well as ambitions so these are examples as well at the same time okay uh, afghan embassy shuts operations in delhi cites lack of diplomatic support so it's very simple so we have afghanistan afghanistan there was this democratic government set up by the us under the leadership of ashraf ghani right so ashraf ghani was there uh, india was doing well in dealing with afghanistan ashraf ghani goes taliban comes india does not recognize taliban we there was already some afghan obviously afghan embassy was there in india but india does not recognize this regime over here but at the same time india wants to maintain relationship india is providing humanitarian aid over to afghanistan right so now they are saying that because of the lack of support from indian side because they do not recognize it uh, it's becoming difficult to operate so they have the embassy has closed down okay afghan hindus afghan six minorities over here so they have raised concerns about the closing of the embassy so india has to balance how they deal with the issue of taliban i think this is something that we should brainstorm more from exam point of view uh, afghan india relationship in the context of taliban okay now we just scroll through we don't have much at the moment global maritime summit uh, to commence soon right so i think when it comes in the news then we will do it uh, in fact if you want to really do it you can also refer to the blue economy right so these terms blue economy india so that also will help you okay now from this newspaper from this page we have two things so one is there is this mention of ins elects governing body what is ins indian newspaper society is it a government organization no it is an apex body of publishers magazines and periodicals right so they have elected uh, uh, rakesh sharma as their president manipur some blast had taken place so nia has some person from private teacher from manipur itself okay now there is a concern that is being raised by the nia nia basically investigate investigate cases concerning terrorism so nia has raised concern that this person had contacts with uh, the myanmar and bangladesh so the involvement of these two countries or uh, people involved here in the foreign countries and the manipur problem are being uh, attached together okay so cm was making a case that this was happening so yeah state bjp want cm to lead unified command of various security forces in uh, manipur okay so paramilitary forces are there army is there your uh, their own state police is there so unified command should be there now only concern is that uh, the cm is seen to be wanting when it comes to action so the cm belongs to the meethi community it is believed that he is partial you know the impartiality is there a lack of objectivity so the when the violence against kuki so there's he's favoring the meethi as compared to kuki in case of unified command there is a concern that interest of the kuki group may, will may get affected okay everybody is actually conflict of interest is seen uh, so oh, there is the special uh, suspend suspension of operations against cookies uh, which was uh, done allegation is made by the congress 
on BJP. So let's forget it. Let's leave it. There are names of two passes over here. So one is Kardungla Pass, uh, uh, and other one is Umling Pass. So this may be asked in the prelims. Umling Allah. Allah means pass. Okay. So Kardungla Pass. Uh, this was the highest pass. This used to be after this, it is Umlingla Pass. And the next, you know, after construction, so highest motorable road is there in this pass. Previously, it was in Kardungla Pass. Kardungla Pass, basic details you should know, like for match the following types of questions. It connects Leh with Pratapur, north of the Nubra Valley. So what do we know? Leh, Par Pratapur and Nubra Valley. So Nubra River. Uh, Nubra Valley means Nubra River passes through it. Nubra River is a, a tributary of the Shiok River. Next is the Umling Pass. Right, so Umling Pass is again in Ladakh. It, uh, it is a ridge line between Yol Lumpa in this river near Demchok. Okay, that's it. Now we come to this, you know, interesting one, which tells us about how gravity can solve the green powers, green renewable energies problem. So what is the renewable energies problem? So first of all, renewable energy is based on forces, you know, the energy coming from the nature itself, like sun, wind, mainly those, tidal is also there, but we're not talking about it. Okay, so let's say we're talking about solar energy. Now, solar energy can it is made by the interaction of the sun on the photovoltaic cell and then electricity is generated. Now, this is an electricity generated is the fun function of the intensity of the sunlight. In fact, during the night time when there will be more load electrical demand, there is no sun. So, no electricity is there. So there is no other way, but we have to depend on conventional means of electricity or energy powered by the fossil fuels. Okay, so that's a problem. The problem is storage of the electricity when it is needed. So there is a proposal that why not use gravity? In fact, I give this example when I'm teaching science and tech. So today it is uh, covered. Okay. So the idea is that th this is the building this is uh, made by the ev uh, the, this this company known as energy vault so there's this building there's this building now yeah so there's this buildings that are there uh, by the way this company has gotten funding from soft uh, soft bank of japan so this building so this it has some modules so you know the water there is water inside this there's the cells slabs and the water goes inside deep. When the sun rays falls, so there are these pumps which pushes the water up. So with the solar energy, the water is pushed up. When the solar energy is not there, when electricity is required, the water, you know, the uh, water is stored in the form of potential energy. The water is allowed to come down because of its weight. So with that weight, the flow of the water downwards, turbines run and electricity is generated. So this is the basic thing. Previously, there was an example given that uh, water be pumped and it's on the slope, right? And the water goes upwards when the sunlight is there. Then the night, the water is allowed to stream downwards. I used to always think that how much of land area would be required. Is it feasible? So these modular buildings, if they can do it, it will be a very, very uh, feasible solution. Right, so UAE, Aramco, so all these companies are also involved in this. Okay, the defense minister is saying that we need stronger armed forces to become a developed nation by 2047. So what are the steps taken, right? What are the shortcomings with the defense forces and what are the steps, recent steps taken to strengthen the armed forces? So first of all, shortcomings. So one is infrastructure, especially in the border areas, right? So it's when it comes to the Chinese side, the northern borders of our country, we are weak. So mobilization of troops, etc. is undermined as compared to the Chinese side. Okay. 
then depleting air forces, uh, air force quadrants, uh, aging MiG aircrafts, Jaguars. So they have to be replaced with modern day jets. So that is there. Okay. The facts I have not added. You can do it. Okay. Submarines also. Although Navy, we are doing very well. We are doing this make in India sector. We are exporting our ships. But when it comes to submarines, our presence is very weak. Chinese, uh, from time to time, the they submarines come and go th through this region. Right? We're not able to intercept. We need more submarines to improve our naval strength. Submarines provided provide stealth capabilities. Okay. Then increasing <coughs> increasing pension and salary burdens or overhead expenditures. Right. Now with this, what is the government doing? Now you see, the first thing is uh, the government has uh, created the CDS, right? So there is this issue of army, air force and navy, different uh, defense forces are there, they have different interests. So the government has to prioritize, okay, fine, which one was more important. So for this purpose, there is the creation of a CDS. And uh, CDS chairs the Department of Military Affairs. So this decides, this makes the plans and outlines for the government to take action. Right, so, so integrated approach to deal with these issues. Second is, def or you can have mentioned first also, Defense Acquisition Council chaired by the Defense Minister. So there is about how, what things will Defense Forces procure, as, you know, as of three forces, what is of priority so that Defense Acquisition Council will do. This is chaired by the Defense Minister, not Prime Minister. Second is, th uh, the other point is Lean Army. So we have this huge pension and salary outlay, right? So one way is that we should reduce the manpower. We should have optimum amount of soldiers. So lean army. Now in line of creation of the lean army, uh, the government came up with the scheme of Agni Veers. Okay. Then we have integrated theater commands. So integrated theater command has been worked upon where a single general from either of the arms, one per person, will have command of all the resources, be it from Air Force, Army or Navy under his command. So this also is in line with the approach of Lean Army, right? optimum utilization of resources. Then the government is obviously working on Make in India in the defense sector. For this, they have also liberalized foreign direct investment in the defense sector. Now, when somebody is, uh, when we are procuring, making procurements like Rafale, etc., we have this transfer of technology provisions as well, so that we get those technologies, so that we can, in future, we can self uh, pro make these equipments. Okay, now we come to the editorial and opinion section. Now, just telling you that Gandhiji ones are not doing it. I have shared as to what, what things have to be covered. So we'll work on those lines also only. We're not focusing on this these things on Gandhiji. Themes I've given, we can work on them independently. What we are doing today is one is on this data governance, uh, uh, software touch, digital, uh, uh, the digital personal uh, data protection bill. This one, slow down, um, not slow down actually, slowing momentum, slow down is a different term or meaning altogether. Okay. So let's cover this first. So normally when you have editorials on the per digital personal detection, uh, data protection bill, these are basically focusing on the shortcomings. Right, okay. So very briefly, uh, by the way, the best approach to study this is this PRS, so that this you may refer. Okay, so the digital, if a question is asked, right, first of all, you will tell what is this digital personal data protection bill. So it is concerning data governance. It defines the data principle, that is whose data is taken, data fiduciaries, those who process and store data like social media companies, right, so that is there. Plus it provides for an institution that will implement the digital personal data protection law. And uh, this would be data protection authority, right? So these three, three things are there. 
now today's article yeah and it also provides for data uh, localization etc so that is concerning data fiduciaries okay next now today's article is telling us the concerns with reference to one of the provisions is that the center can block content on the internet so take down requests or content blocking orders to the online platforms can be given according to the personal data protection law now it's not not very clear as to why did they need to do this since there is already section 69a of the it act okay so this is there now this is of concern because the government is seen to be increasing the takedown request and not to write but uh, especially when it is critical of the government like during the farm laws etc so that happens second is the center wants to have you know they also want to provide safe harbor protection as so those the restrictions of this law is not their safe harbor protection then deployment they want to regulate the deployment of emerging technologies so the paper the newspaper says that uh, i differ on this so the newspaper says that with this uh, regulation of emerging technologies this will lead to uh, making deployment of new technologies more difficult it is, it is not going to be good i differ because uh, the government has been saying that we are going to emphasize on sandbox approach and there is a need for a unique framework for regulation of new technologies something has to be done definitely like deep fakes etc and obviously the government will have to do so some policy framework has to be there for that purpose but at the same time a liberalized or a softer approach is needed so soft sandbox approach something like that can be done okay so content blockage safe power protection and emerging technologies these three are met and with content blockage they talked about the takedown requests have gone up plus there is concern about opaque decision making see center says that you remove the content that is fine it some content should not be there but what basis you have taken the decision is it for self interest of the political party in power or for the public interest right? that has to be defined is it violative of article 19 of the constitution freedom of speech and expression we don't know so there is opaque decision making process the criteria etc are not defined and it's not there in the public domain so that's a matter of concern besides these points there is one more you can add is exemption to the center so center has a free hand in appointment of members to the data protection authority besides the center is one of the biggest judiciaries right aadhar etc but center is exempted on the uh, grounds of the digital personal data protection bill so a lot of exemptions have been given to the center which is not justified uh, you, you, we'll have to you know you have a softer wording so here okay on gandhi ji uh uh just one thing i wanted to share today although i have pointed out as to how questions can be asked just one this thing i wanted to say you know when we talk about gandhi ji overall his philosophy was sarvodaya that is upliftment of all and uh with this all these other things like trusteeship models means more important than ends uh, non violence swadeshi satyagraha they were all linked to upliftment of all they were all means to the end which was sarvodaya so this has to be done in the rightful way right means more important than the ends non non violent means should be adopted violence is under no circumstances is acceptable you can give examples of chori chora okay swadeshi swadeshi because self manufacture within india should be there so it, it benefits it leads to upliftment of all satyagraha struggle for the right cause struggle for sarvodaya upliftment so everything is actually connected with this if you use this model it will help you trusteeship model there are certain people who are wealthy certain people who are benef benefi uh, you know uh, they benef they have benefited on some grounds or the other so it is their responsibility they are the trustees of wealth and it is their responsibility to look after the people it's very important philosophy on gandhi ji himachal upsc it is important himachal exam it is very very important on gandhi ji especially these these are mentioned in the syllabus and then gandhi ji seven sense were asked in the ethics paper also 
नेक्स्ट अ स्लोइंग मोमेंटम सो इट्स ये बेसिकली से इंडियन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी इज लाइकली टू लूज स्पेस इन सेकेंड हाफ वाई so one first thing that is mentioned is base effect but that doesn't mean it is slowed down right so that's why i not mentioned test first point so let me explain this also base effect so it's basically saying that previously indian economy has been doing good so let's do make a chart over here right so it's been doing good so with reference to this it will be difficult for it to have a higher growth rate because of the high base effect so previously it was doing well so therefore because of the high base effect that advantage will not be there now that's the first point second and the important points now why it is slowing down monsoon monsoon has been erratic some places too much of rains and most parts red zone drought areas right so this has affected agriculture Uh, it has affected uh, the water availability water reservoir india is becoming more water stressed as a result so this will drive in inflation it will affect consumption so this is these are not good signs second commodity prices especially in the global commodity prices have hiked and global commodity prices main concern is crude oil fuel fuel prices go up it increases the cost of manufacture it leads to more inflation in by any means of imagination it is not good for the economy okay it will affect india's interest next global outlook is also not good global economy is not doing well so this undermines our exports we export merchandise etc we export it services so again it services are also by very nature what india exports are in capital in nature their long term uh, big expenditures which which can also be delayed also so it affects the outlook for the it sector in fact infosys at the very start of the year they said that uh, not the start but the, the new quarter they said that uh, our, it, the rev outlook is not good then lastly india's economic growth that we were seeing the higher growth rate this was pushed by higher spending of the government on capital expenditure so government is providing for capital expenditure government cannot indefinitely provide money right so eventually the momentum this will come down so the previous especially the post covid growth rate has been coming by the government spending on capital expenditure which is likely to come down in the times to come so these are the main factors now i will honestly tell you if the mains was to take place right now right well, sometime from now maybe this question may have been more uh, this article may have been very important right now it is more of information sake only in you know, basic understanding thing only nothing more than that an article of faith nari shakti vandan adhiniyam by uh, one of the minister for law and justice okay so Nar women reservation bill and it will lead to women led development that's fine now not going more into it i just want you to study more on the women led development model as with, as compared to women empowerment right so that's something that you can look into other than that we have done this so many times right now we don't have to okay so now we have this uh, india middle east europe corridor imec right so we have uh, mr ramitab kant so his interview is there which i'm not reading and this this is going to be focusing on india's achievements and the g20 he was the sherpa he was the chief negotiator for india on g20 let's go well, i'm just focusing on this main heading over here and uh, i gave you this challenge also to brainstorm i gave you this questions in blue now i have added content in green so imec needs to be projectized de risk and private se sector brought in so projectized means that entire corridor i hope now you by now you know india being connected to middle east middle east connected to europe so project wise maybe it can be given so that can be the approach that is there okay and these projects can be given to the private sector for profit okay next first one now so first question was de risk how what is the risk first of all so de, de risk from what 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 are the risks for the imec so basically this region is politically unstable 
these countries first of all iran will be there israel saudi arabia they have they don't have good relations right so that is there this region is also prone to the growth of militia like the islamic state so new and new militant organizations keep coming up over here this is the place where there is ideal conditions high demographic uh, dividend at the same time low economic growth low inclusive growth so ideal conditions for political turmoil so obviously if a project is going through such an area it, it's it is risked it affects connectivity anyone any one countries any one link is blocked it is affecting it okay and lastly the financial risk is also there project given my funding etc but now not able to implement it so financial de-risking is also required private sector should be brought in how can they be brought in by project based of course then uh, they can be uh, you know in the uh, in the way of pri public private partnership models like there is for the government so the same model can be incorporated so private sectors cap capital private sectors expertise can be brought in now when private capital is coming in private people are putting their money it is for profit and normally in such cases the usage will actually increase the cost now that may be a concern with private sector coming in but it, it's it's very much a case that private sector should be brought in in fact i think one pro example can be given is kandla port run by adani group right so the created world class infrastructure which is actually much more efficient and long term it is cost effective so their expertise also comes in it has huge strategic economic advantage so this you will elaborate yourself now we come to the economy section so very quickly we will do it import of russian iraqi oil to india stepped up in september in fact we were hearing about russia stopping their uh, oil exports in the future okay so in, it's actually increased september and this has come at saudi arabia's expense more is required gst collection rises 10.2% uh, rupees 1.62 lakh crore in september you know there used to be a big thing that indirect tax collection of has touched 1 lakh crore and we see that this keeps increasing at, at a quite significant pace so what i feel is important what we can look at is that uh, today just sharing the idea uh, what we can see is why what are the factors that are leading to the increase in the gst collection i personally do not feel that it is more of this economic activities that are growing up economy gdp is growing up at that faster pace i feel it is more of the widening of the tax base or bringing more people under the ambit of taxation so what are the factors that are leading to this likewise uh, we saw previously that direct tax collection like income tax so so that has increased you know the rti filing has increased um, in the recent times so it again indicates the widening of the tax base so i feel you should have a definition of tax base and uh, the recent schemes of the government uh, to uh, the measures of the government that has led to widening of the tax base that is important okay a pv wholesales to record high in september so pv means passenger vehicles so good numbers for maruti hyundai toyota so these companies normally this is a discretionary spending so this shows that the economy is doing well people are willing to spend money why mpc monetary uh, uh, policy committee which is responsible for monetary policy on behalf of reserve bank of india they decide the repo rate etc so is likely to maintain repo rate pause without reading we know we previously the government has been discussing this the rbi governor so inflation is high right inflation is above the threshold level of 4 plus minus 2% it is at somewhere around 6.4% 6.5% mentioned over here so when the inflation is high we expect that rbi should will take measure of increasing the repo rate repo rate will increase it's a liquid liquidity adjustment facility it will increase the cost of capital or the interest rate for the banks 
so the banks will lend less or the credit availability in the economy will come down the money supply will come down as a result of this so when the less money is there so automatically demand will should come down but we expect that rbi will not you know it will maintain a repo rate pause it will not increase the repo rate why so what the governor previously argued was that inflation was at 7 8 percent primarily fueled by uh, supply side constraints so one is about uh, the vegetable prices which were exorbitantly expensive very very expensive so that was one thing so that it doesn't you know that's because of those things it's not a broader econ economic issue so we should not take action right now uh, the other thing now we can say is that crude prices are increasing so that is also pushing the prices to be high so this is more of a supply side issue so this should be dealt with rather than dealing with the demand in fact one more argument was made by the governor he said that inflation was at around seven to eight percent this has actually come down to 6.5 percent so right now action is not warranted we are watchful but right now action is not warranted and yes when the cost of capital increases it increases it you know it increases the cost of money for investments so capacity creation for gdp growth that also gets affected as a result so it is not good for the industry economic activity so these were the, these are the main reasons why the rbi is likely to maintain repo rate it will not decrease but it will actually just maintain it status quo in alarm over conocarpus uh, this uh, mangrove species we discussed previously a mangrove species uh, so this has been discussed there is an explainer on this we'll try to infer which all in, uh, species are there why are invasive species of concern so all that we will study okay so conocarpus you know these are mangroves uh, these are part of like government you know for greenification urban greening beautification they are using this quite freely so this is an invasive species that means it is not indigenous to india so where is it coming from so if you do a simple google research it will say it is belonging to the tropical region mangroves grow in tropical regions okay but however it is coming from south america it is native to south america so there are two things so one is conocarpus erectus and then there is c lancy folius which is from east africa so it is coming from these geographies so what is the concern with this the primary concern is that these release pollen and it is causing uh, pollen allergies and respiratory problems as a result the government of gujarat has said that we are not using this species now so pollen allergies and respiratory problems so that's the only one that is mentioned over here so here, here the author is saying that uh, you know with this indigenous uh, using this invasive exotic species or invasive species uh, this is not good now these release pollens uh, we are getting affected by this now other plants also release pollens we are not affected by because our immune systems have co-evolved with the indigenous species now you plant something alien alien to us from outside so it is affecting us naked adversely so this is the only negative point that has mentioned now obviously we know that more problems are there so invasive species normally they are they find ways and means of replacing indigenous species indigenous species are normally uh, more suitable for the geography in which they are there they put less burden on the local resources like nutrients water so in that sense it is much more beneficial plus of course now we know about diseases that may come up with these invasive species now with reference to this invasive species the term was asked in the main paper allelopathy allelopathy is uh, okay allelopathy is basically a biological phenomena associated with invasive species where they release biochemicals which inhibits the growth of other species around it so other species are affected because of this this was asked in mains paper it's concerned with invasive species okay which other uh, invasive species are there or obviously there are many other but only few are mentioned a few are mentioned because they are there is a better recall and more likely they are important also so 
exam also shall, shall pick this, right, by logic prelims. So there is Velayati Kikar, which is Eucalyptus juliflora. So that is there. Then there is Acacia mangium, Acacia mangium and Lantana camera. So these two are, these are mentioned. Now, these are again um, mangroves, they are particular, specific to a particular geography, but something like uh, Velayati Kikar, etc. They are now everywhere across the country. So it is, it's a missed opportunity. So now they are there, they are there. We can do anything, we can do nothing about it. Okay. Not important for exam on the, how Gandhi's image appeared, but I didn't know this. It was it was only in uh, 1990s that Gandhi's Im image actually started to come in all the currency notes. So first, initially it was George VI photos, right? Just after independence. Later it was like Lion Capital, Ashoka Pillar. Even it would be Aryabhat satellite. So these were there. First time Gandhi's Im image emerged in 1969. So why all currency notes started having Gandhiji's photo? So basic thing was that, uh, you know, the ability of copying currency notes, so creating counterfeit currency, known as repo graphic. So this technology had improved and uh, the, you know, the people who make these uh, notes, RBA, they just felt that it is better that we don't, we don't use inanimate objects like symbols, etc., which is easy to copy. So facial expression, human face was chosen. And Gandhiji is given his role, he's known as the father of uh, uh, the nation. His image was chosen. And thereby all currency notes have this image. So this was only in 1990s. Okay, so this concludes our...